Welcome to the video presentation of MLA Citation and Avoiding Plagiarism. If you are watching this video, you are taking one of my courses that has a research paper. So this is going to be a brief summary about what citation is, why it matters, and how to avoid losing points due to improper citation or plagiarism. Uh, for some of you, this is going to be stuff that's already second nature. For others, it's going to be entirely new. I think most of you will fall somewhere in between there. Regardless of your experience with this, uh, I think it's going to be a good, uh, a good video for you to watch and take in. So let's talk about this. MLA is one of multiple citation styles. Uh, the reason why I have you use MLA is it's the most common one. Uh, even though it's not typically used in life science uh, disciplines, uh, it's the most common citation style. And uh, simply put, there's so much else that I want you to focus on in this course. I don't want to try and teach you another citation style that's not as familiar, uh, probably, as MLA would be. So we're going to use MLA, even though in, in science disciplines it's often not, not the style that's used. But we're going to use it. Citation, uh, in general, is attributing the information that you give me, or that you write about, to the source that you got it from. And the reason why I want to see it is I want to know where you got that information, right? Number one, it's important to credit the individual who provided it for you. But number two, I want to see where it came from. Let's say you told me something that was wrong in the research paper. I want to know where you got that information. So you have to attribute your information to the original source. And most people have no issue with this when it comes to a works cited page. What trips most people up is this in-text citation business. So every semester I'll get several papers where the entire paper itself has no citations in the writing, and then there's a work cited page at the end. But there's nothing within the actual paper itself um, in terms of citations, and that gets a nice point deduction, and I don't want that to happen to you. So, in-text citation is an important component of writing a paper. Citation, we said, was attributing information to the source that you got it from. In-text citation means that within the actual writing of your paper, you are including, in parentheses, the source of the information right after you tell me about it. So, uh, after every piece of information in your paper that is not common knowledge, you want to list the name of either the author, or if there's no author, the name of the resource, where you got your information from. Um, in terms of, of what common knowledge is, it's, um, it's sometimes a gray area, but let me give you an example. Uh, that is Roger the kangaroo. He was made famous for having huge muscles as a kangaroo. Uh, but he's a red kangaroo, one of multiple species in Australia. Common knowledge. Australia is home to kangaroos. I think we, we all pretty much know that. That doesn't have to be cited in your paper. However, let's say you're writing about red kangaroos. And you want to write that red kangaroos are found in the desert interior of Australia, while gray kangaroos are found along the eastern coast. Most people don't know that. So you would want to list in your paper the source that gave you that information. Let me give you an example of uh, an in-text citation with ruby-throated hummingbirds. These are the hummingbirds we have here in, the, in Missouri. And so here's a statement about hummingbirds. Each year, ruby-throated hummingbirds fly over 500 miles across the Gulf of Mexico, typically without stopping. As soon as the hummingbirds reach the southern coast of the US, they must stop and find sugar to eat. Uh, so that is, first of all, it's true, which is pretty awesome when you think about how tiny a hummingbird is. Uh, but that is not common knowledge, I would, I would say. So let's say this is in your paper, and let's say that this first sentence, how far they fly and not stopping, let's say that came from an article or a book who had, which had, an, uh, excuse me, which had an author whose last name was Johnson. After that piece of information, 
you'd want to list the name of the author of that book or article or whatever it might be. And let's say the second part here about reaching the coast and finding sugar came from a resource that doesn't have an author, different from the book by Johnson, and it's called Birds of America. So after that piece of information, you would write Birds of America. This is telling me that this first part came from your source by Johnson, and the second part came from your source called Birds of America. Let's say you got all this from one author, an author named Smith. You would just put it at the end of the whole thing. You don't have to put it after every sentence. If there's an entire paragraph by one source, uh, or from one source, you can just put that source at the end of the paragraph. But in the actual writing that you do, you have to include these in-text citations or you will lose a good chunk of points. Also, uh, you're gonna have a works cited page at the end of all this. Just, this is a common question, so yes, the works cited page counts toward the word count. The works cited page is going to be at the end. Uh, I forgot to get rid of my second picture of Roger the kangaroo, so that's there. Uh, but with the works cited page, uh, you can include everything that was directly cited in the paper. So in our last hummingbird example, you would include the article by Johnson or by Smith or Birds of America. But in addition to that, you want to include something that you may have looked at but not directly cited. So you can include stuff that you consulted but never actually uh, used directly in your paper in those parentheses. In terms of how to make a works cited page, uh, it varies um, with book resources, journal articles, regular websites. There's some handy resources I've put links to in Canvas that will help you in formatting. And there's also another link I had that will uh, format it for you. I think it's called citationmachine.net. I am totally fine with you using this to help you generate proper MLA formatted citations at the end of your paper. Let's talk quickly then also about plagiarism. This is intentionally or unintentionally using another's work without attributing the work. So if you write your whole paper, you actually write it in your own words and you don't include those in-text citations. Technically that is plagiarizing, but I don't treat it the same way I would as the plagiarism I'm about to talk about. So if you write the whole paper and forget to include any of those in-text citations, you will lose some points, but it's not going to be treated as if you just copied and plagiarized the whole thing. When I talk about plagiarism here, I'm talking about you not even writing your paper. You just copied the information from some other source, copy-pasted, and didn't do any work. So that's what I mean when I talk about plagiarism. Having said that, I still find in most cases, it's unintentional. And here's how it usually happens. A student will find an article, find two or three sentences that are good information. They'll copy and paste those two sentences uh, into their paper, find another article, copy and paste those sentences word for word after that first couple sentences they copy pasted. And what you end up getting for your paper is basically a bunch of little snippets copied and pasted from other sources and so you as the student never actually wrote anything. That is how plagiarism most often happens. It's not usually just copying an entire paper from somebody else. It's usually little bits and pieces copied and pasted with no writing on your part. So that's how it usually happens. If you do that, even if it's unintentional, um, if you do it for the entire paper, you get a zero. But let's say that for one section you did that and then you actually wrote the rest of the paper. You would lose uh, points for that section. You get a zero for that section if you obviously didn't write it. By the way, I should add, uh, any use of, of AI or chat GPT or anything like that for your paper. Uh, if I have 
evidence that you did that, that's an automatic zero. You need to write this thing. It has to be your writing. So uh, intentionally plagiarizing the entire paper or most of the paper is a zero. If you incidentally do this in a couple areas, you'll lose points for it, but I wouldn't give you a zero for the whole paper. Let me give you an example of what, what I mean in more detail. You need to paraphrase. You need to take somebody else's writing, the source that you're getting this from, and you need to rewrite it in your own words. If you're putting in a direct quote, then you don't have to paraphrase, but I hate quotes. Uh, please don't use many of them. Please put almost all the information in your own words. I want this to be your work. So you have to paraphrase the information in your paper. You can't just copy and paste what the author says. Uh, these are baby uh, emperor penguins. Uh, so let's take a look at, if you're writing about emperor penguins, uh, what you might do. Let's say that the author of an article wrote this. Penguins live in the Antarctic with fish serving as their primary food source. That's word for word what the author wrote. In your paper, you cannot just copy and paste these words. What you can do is this. The Antarctic is home to penguins and they feed mostly on fish. This is the same information. You got it from this author. You just wrote it in your own words. And, by the way, even though you paraphrase, you still have to put the source at the end of that. So let's say the author's name was Jones. At the end of this paraphrased sentence, you would still need to include where you got the information. So just because you're paraphrasing doesn't get you off the hook for in-text citations. You have to paraphrase everything and you have to include those in-text citations there. The minimum resource count for this paper is seven. Uh, you will lose points if you don't use seven resources and have those in your work cited page. It is important to note whether or not your sources are credible. Um, unless all of your sources are really sketchy, I generally don't take off points if you use something that really isn't peer reviewed, but you still uh, need to you need to keep the focus of your, of your sources uh, as a reliable piece of information. So what would be a credible or reputable source? Um, journal articles. Let me give you a little hint with these. A lot of times they're hard to read. Um, if you just read the first part of them, which is called the abstract, that gives you a summary and that usually has all the information that you need. Also, a good place to find these is called uh, Google Scholar. If you go to the regular Google page and search Google Scholar and go there, all the search results are going to be scientifically valid journal articles. So it's really neat. Uh, so journal articles are good if there's a textbook. I don't think you'll find much in the textbook for this class, but but books, books in general are good. I know that's kind of old school now. Um, any website that ends in .edu and any website that ends in .org to a point. There are activist websites that are very skewed and biased and not really reputable. But if it's .org, it's generally probably going to be more reliable than .com, but use, use discernment there. And then anything that's a reputable organization. So let's say you're writing about wild turkeys or deer here in Missouri. The Department of Conservation is going to have a ton of stuff for you. And so that would be a reputable source. Um, let's say you're writing about an endangered species. There's um, .gov websites. Uh, the EPA website would be another one. Things like that. Things that are reputable that are, you know what they are, you know uh, that you can trust the, the the information there. So those are good examples of, uh, of reputable sources. All right, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Um, I 